And right now, we've got another guest getting ready to come on. We're about to speak to uh, one of the sons of the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase. Uh, he wrestles out in Amarillo, Texas, and uh, he's been in the business for about a year now. He's the new NWA North American Heavyweight Champion, and I do believe we have him on the line now, Mr. Mike DiBiase. Yes, sir. How are you guys doing this morning? Oh, we're doing good. Doing good. Thank you for joining us this morning. We've been looking forward to talking to you. Thank you for having me. So, uh, so Mike, you've been in the business, uh, we'll say, you, you got in the business in February of 2006. Is that about right? Uh, yeah, that's about right. That's about right, yeah. Now, uh, you have a younger brother, uh, Teddy Jr., who's also in the business. Uh, right. Did you guys always aspire to follow in your father's footsteps uh, growing up? Uh, I got to tell you, man, we always did. Our dad was our hero. And uh, like any little kid growing up, um, you know, dad was always a hero. But uh, uh, it's a hard business, and it's a hard life. And uh, dad didn't always want us necessarily to be wrestlers. But uh, it came to this point, and, uh, you know, we were like, you know, dad, you know, we want to do it. And uh, finally, we, that's why we got in the business so late. We had to have dad's blessing first. <laughs> now, how often did you get to go and, and actually go to the matches and, and see your father wrestle? Uh, growing up, we got to go to a lot of things, man. Uh, that was kind of our our time with Dad on the road. Um, we would go and uh, spend, you know, back then they held a lot heavier and harder schedule than they do now, you know. Uh, Dad would be on the road 10, 15, 20 days at a time and come home for three and be gone again. So uh, sometimes we would take turns. Uh, myself, Teddy, and uh, Brett, our youngest brother, we would go out and um, spend, you know, three, four, five days on the road with Dad, you know, and me in various places. You never know where we'd be going. But um, we got to do that quite a bit. Uh, now, besides obviously your father, uh, who were some of the wrestlers you looked up to and and and, and were fans of growing up? Uh, Terry Funk, uh, I looked I looked up to a lot. Terry Funk is my godfather uh, as well, but uh, I always I've always uh, looked up to him a lot. I've gained a lot of wisdom from him over the years, as well as my dad did too. Uh, Terry Funk, Harley Race, obviously Harley Race is the guy we went to, and my dad sent us to. That's where we were trained. Uh, got a lot of love, admiration, and respect for those men. Uh, you know, those were men's men, and uh, you know, not only as wrestlers, but as as, as men, they are very admirable uh, guys that uh, I always looked up to. Hey, none none better to look up to than than them. Right. Um, now, the the first bit of training you got was in Amarillo with uh, Chris Youngblood. Tell us a little bit about about breaking in there and getting your first bit of training. Yeah, I got I got just a little just a little, a little hair of uh, training there uh, uh, with Chris, and uh, that, that that was about it. It wasn't uh, wasn't a whole lot to it. Uh, that's when uh, I expressed uh, my uh, wanting to get in the business with my dad, and uh, I shot straight up to Harley races. Now speaking of none better, I mean, if if you want to get trained in the wrestling business, uh, Harley Race is is the man to see. I mean, uh, he's a legend, and I mean, one of the most knowledgeable guys there is. Uh, how was it, you know, training under Harley and, and, and learning from one of the best? Oh, gosh, i got to tell you, uh, you know, Harley is a, a living legend in his own right. And it was uh, it was very nice. It was, uh, it was one of the hardest things me and my brother ever did. You know, uh, we were excited to get up there. But I'm going to tell you what, between Harley, uh, his staff, uh, Trevor, Trevor, what we know is Trevor Murdoch uh, lives there in Eldon, Missouri with the Harley um, his uh, his head trainer, a guy named Darren Wade, hell of a worker. Um, you know, he they they wore me and my brother out. They uh, they let us have it, and um, I wouldn't have it any other way. It was one of the hardest things we've ever done. But uh, they they uh, oh gosh, I can't even begin to tell you. Between Harley, uh, Trevor Murdoch, uh, Darren Wade, um, and the Japanese guys, uh, pro wrestling Noah, uh, guys like Kenta, and um, oh gosh, Misawa, all those guys. Uh, over uh, the course of a year, we uh, we took in a lot, learned a lot. We're very fortunate to uh, be able to have done that. So, uh, how much of a thrill was it to be able to to tag with your brother there in uh, WLW for Harley? Man, let me tell you what. Uh, once this all came together, and me and my brother, you know, it's funny. We, we you know, as kids, we always grew up. And we talked about, man, we you know, we want to be wrestlers and whatnot. And uh, our debut match, Teddy and I tagged together, and. Uh, it was one of the most amazing moments that uh, we've ever had in our lives, and we'll never forget it. It was, uh, you know, it was, we we tagged together, and now we've kind of, you know, we've uh, we're not together now, but we will be soon. That's that's our next big goal is to uh, stand in the middle of the WWE ring 
with those tag belts around our waist. That's uh, that's the next step. <laughs> I tell you what, I, I I think that would be a phenomenal uh, a gim a ready made gimmick there, man. If, if they they yeah. you know, bring your father back to manage you, and you know, you got the Dibiase brothers and. You know the sons of the million dollar man, and they, you know, they've you have the angle they've they've been brought up in the life of luxury and bred to be wrestling champions, and you know he he paid Harley Race to train them and all. I mean, you've got just the whole angle just ready to go there, man. I don't know why they yeah. wouldn't jump all over that. Well, you never know, man. You never know. Just keep your eyes and ears peeled. You never know what will happen. And you know, it's funny. We've got a we've got another brother. There's three of us. Right. And, right. Uh, you know that that uh, that leaves room open. You know, maybe five six years down the road to have some. Uh, Six man tag team belts out there. <laughs> the WBC dynasty can, can rule the WWE. <laughs> you never know, man. There's a lot of guys. You know, we're we're all excited. Um, there's a lot of third generation, second generation kids coming up. You know, you got the uh, Harry Smith, uh, Natty Neidhart. Let me tell you what, Natty Neidhart's one to watch out for. That girl is an unbelievable worker, um, sweetheart of a girl. You know, she's going to go. Uh, I would see her to be the next WWE Women's Champion very soon. Well, it, you know, it would be good to have somebody in there like her who who can actually wrestle and oh, uh, and, and you a, know as tough as any of the guys, you know. I'll tell you what, Natty. Uh, um, uh, I'm, I'm close friends with the the Hart family, and uh, I've got all the respect in the world for Natty. Natty, I'm gonna tell you what, Natty, get in there with the best of us and uh, and and put it to you real quick. That's why I've got a. Oh gosh, she's just a sweetheart of a girl, and she can work. She can. Oh my gosh, she can wrestle her. Wow, she's amazing. I tell you to look for big things from her. Now we talked about you know we talked about your father and your brother and and um, you know there's there's guys who work for years and years uh, in the business to make a name for themselves and you coming in you know the DiBiase name carries a lot of weight and and a whole lot to live up to. Did you find it tough starting out while you're still trying to learn the business and you're still trying to to get everything down that that having that DBIC name raises the bar and people have so much expectations of you that to, to live up to that before maybe even you're ready? Yeah, i got to tell you, man, um, having a DBIC name, a lot of guys look at us and go, oh, well, you got it made, you got it easy. I'm going to tell you what, it, we've got it harder than anybody else because the bar is so high. Um, between my father and my grandfather, uh, Terry Funk being my godfather, we're trained by Harley, all these things, man. And we're so blessed to have all those things behind us. But I'm going to tell you what, it's the hardest thing, uh, me and my brother both agree, it's the hardest thing we've ever done. Because when you walk out there, even though, you know, early on in our career, actually, I started in uh, February of 2005. It was right about the beginning, actually January of 06 is when I got real started. So it's been about two years, but um, it's very hard. Uh, it's not, you know, a lot of guys work through, you know, that's one reason that dad sent us to Harley's. And uh, we learned a lot of respect there. Um, you know, it's a lot of things we we realized that we knew growing up in the business, you know, being around our whole lives. There's a lot of things about the business that we understand uh, just because we've been around. Um, but to answer your question, uh, it's one of the hardest things we've ever done. We have a big bar to live up to, big shoes to fill. And, um, you know, it's not easy. Uh, a lot of people go, oh, well, you know, they, you guys had it handed to you, and I guarantee you, no, we didn't. Um, you know, we, uh, you know, as as we speak, you know, I had a, my ACL worked on um, about five, six months ago, and you know, I'm doing what I have to do. I'm working an independent circuit uh, and and uh, working my way back up to where I've got to be. You know, it's not you just don't just walk right into it like a lot of people think. Right. Now, you mentioned your grandfather, of course, that being your namesake, uh, Iron Mike DiBiase. Uh, how, how, how much of his career have you, have you been able to, to see, you know, tapes of or, or read up on, you know, to really know uh, about his history uh, in the business? Um, there's not a whole lot of tapes on Mike. We have a couple of them, and there's, that's about it, uh, sadly enough. Um, most of everything I've learned about uh, Mike has come from my dad, Terry Funk, and Harley Race. Um, every now and then, I get uh, lucky along the lines, and I'll run into somebody here in Amarillo that, uh, that you know, got to see Mike work. And I've read, you know, I've, I've done all the studying I can. And, um, you know, if it wasn't for Mike, uh, I wouldn't be here right now doing what I'm doing. He was a huge inspiration to my father. Uh, as everybody knows, Mike was actually my stepfather, or my step-grandfather. And uh, he took my dad in, and, uh, my grandmother, Helen Hild, was also a, a wrestler. 
I don't know, a lot of people know that. But uh, Mike was a, <laughs> again, he was he's right there with Harley and and and, and Terry. He was a man's man, and uh, he inspired my father uh, to do uh, to do what he did. And then he's, and then in the same turn, he's inspired us. Uh, he was a phenomenal uh, wrestler, uh, uh, collegiate and uh, professional. Mike was a national uh, national wrestling champion out of the uh, University of Nebraska, AAU uh, national champion. And uh, uh, also another funny side uh, piece of history, uh, a year, no, two years ago at the uh, Hall of Fame induction, Luthes uh, um, Hall of Fame, and I think it was Iowa, I'm pretty sure it was Iowa, um, I forget the guy's name, and I apologize, but he was a uh, Olympic gold medalist, and um, the only loss he had on his record was to Mike. And so it was a, it was a nice thing to find out. But either way, uh, as far as Mike's career goes, he was a, uh, a phenomenal heel, and uh, as well as that was my dad's uh, thing too. So who knows? Maybe me and Teddy will end up being some uh, heels. <laughs> Now, uh, you mentioned your, your torn ACL uh, earlier, and during the time that you were recouping from that, you moved back out to Amarillo, and you've since become the uh, NWA North American champion. Uh, tell us a little bit how you ended up with that title. Well, I'll tell you what, man. I, uh, you know, it's funny how things fall into place. Uh, Teddy and I both signed with Pro Wrestling Noah out of Japan, and two weeks before we were supposed to leave on that tour, I tore my ACL and meniscus, and uh, you know, I was devastated. And I came back home to Amarillo. Amarillo's home. I was born here, and... Uh, Came home to have the surgery. In the meantime, I, uh, there's a local fed here, uh, the PWF, and um, uh, I, you know, would go out and watch those guys and work with them. And uh, you know, it's kind of a, a, a place for me to start rehabbing my knee, get back in them shape and whatnot. Uh, I got back in the ring probably about three months, three four months ago, and started hitting them pretty hard. And uh, I got booked down in Dallas, Texas, with uh, NWA Southwest, and at that show. Um, I ran across and met uh, uh, many people know in the business, Dave Marquez, who was the president of Pro Wrestling uh, uh, NWA Pro out of uh, L.A. And uh, from there, um, I uh, started doing some deals with them and uh, just uh, golly, got booked for uh, a NWA uh, North American Heavyweight title match against uh, Mr. Mid-Atlantic uh, Damian Wayne uh, about three weeks ago. And uh, history was made <laughs> awesome yeah my uh, you know I, I think i don't know if everybody knows but uh, my grandfather held that title uh the north american title my dad was the uh, nwa north american heavyweight champion uh years down in alley decades ago and that title actually um the first time he was hired by vince senior in the 70s uh he was the north american heavyweight title holder and uh Vince hired him, and that title, as we know it today, is the Intercontinental title, um, because uh, my dad went into uh, WWF, as it was called then, with that title, and Vince Senior honored it, and uh, it became the Intercontinental title as we know it today. Wow, that's that is that is interesting. I didn't I didn't realize the lineage followed from the the original North yeah. American title. That's yeah, and actually, you know, another thing, the uh, North American title originated out of uh, from Stu Hart out of Stampede. Uh, a lot of people don't know that either. So there's the man. There's the, the history is ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> uh, with you know you know he, you know uh, what it meant to me to win that title was uh, I can't even tell you. You know I sat there and just thought, wow, it, it was a pretty pretty amazing deal for me. You know it's one of those little steps you take in your career and you're like, wow, you know I mean I'm, I'm getting somewhere here. Well, congratulations on that. I know you'll uh, you'll do the do the title proud and. Um... Now, have you? I've read conflicting reports. I've read that you have and you haven't. Have you signed a developmental deal? No, I have not. I have not. There's uh, there's been a lot of talk. Uh, I can't really uh, discuss that. Uh, you know, it's one of those deals. But um, my my knee surgery. I'll just put it to you this way. Uh, uh, I would be right there where my brother is right now if it weren't for the knee surgery. But I, uh, let me assure you, I'll be right back there. Good deal. Good deal. Yeah. Um. Now, with 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 all the the deaths and all the negative things that that's associated with wrestling in the past several years, uh, did any of that make you apprehensive about going into the business? I know that might have been some of what, you know what your father uh, had against you two going in the business. Uh, did it ever concern you? 
No, let me tell you what, man. There's been a lot of negative light on the business lately. And uh, I'll tell you, just like uh, my dad's told me and Terry Funk's told me, it's not the business that makes men. These men make their own decisions. Everybody's grown men, and it's like anything else. You can make bad decisions. And, you know, there has been some death and this and the other. You know, a lot of people don't understand the uh, the toll this business takes on a person. Um, you know, uh, you, you're always going to make your own decisions. And, you know, the schedule, um, you know, that these guys used to keep is, is unbelievable. You know, a lot of people go, you know, I don't know, you, you, you can't compare professional wrestlers today to anything else. We take a bigger toll on our bodies, our lives, physically and mentally and emotionally than anybody does. And um, a lot of people out there don't understand that. And to answer your question, you know, um, I grew up and I watched my dad, and he was my hero. Um, you know, everybody has their own, uh, you go through certain things in life, but um, I was fortunate to watch him and listen to him and then Harley and Terry give me their wisdom. And, uh, you know, no, there's nothing negative. I don't see the business as negative. Um, you know, any business, you can walk in the bank across the street and there could be negative things going on because it's the decisions that men make as themselves. And uh, it's how you, uh, you know, you know, you take the fame and the fortune. And, and, and you know, a lot of times it's not always, it's not always fame and fortune. I'm going to tell you right now, at this point in my career, it's not about fame and fortune. It's uh, about filling big shoes, and hopefully one day I'll make it there. But uh, it's a hard road, and uh, it's not always what it's cracked up to be. But you know, it's something you have to have a passion about, and something you have to love. And um, as far as the negative things are going on, it's uh, I don't blame the wrestling business. And if anybody does, I uh, I'll go head to head and toe to toe with them because it's about the decisions you make as a person. Absolutely, I I think that's. A good way to look at it, you know, it's what you make of it. Uh, now, speaking of the, you know, the wisdom that, that you've received from, you know, Terry Funk and your dad and different people like that, what would you say, if you could just narrow it down, what's the best piece of advice, the most important piece of advice you've been given and the one you, you, you know, foresee probably giving other guys in the future as you go on through the business? Oh, man, that's, uh, <laughs> that's a hard one to narrow down between uh, the guys that uh, taught me things. Um, you know, again, like I just said, um, don't ever forget where you came from. Don't ever forget the men. You know, like I said, if it wasn't for my Iron Mike DiBiase, my grandfather, I wouldn't be here talking to you. Um, if it wasn't for Terry Funk, I mean, golly, Terry is a living legend. I mean, the guy, oh, I can't tell you. You know, these guys literally laid down their bodies for, uh, I, if I was going to tell any guy coming up, is pay attention and listen to the veterans. Listen to what they have to say. Don't ever, you know, the minute you think you've reached the top, you've hit rock bottom. And, um, you know, be humble. Uh, it's, a, it's a tough business. Um, I, I Golly, I can't, you know, I've, <laughs> I can't narrow it down to one thing. you got to uh, understand that between the guys that uh, these guys have told me many things. And, you know, uh, just basically... If, and one thing they've all told me is, you know what, just wrestle and don't worry about it. Everything else will fall into place. So it's one of Harley Race's slogans, just shut up and wrestle. <laughs> that's, uh, that, it, it, that's hard to narrow down, but, uh, yeah, just shut up and wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> that thumbs up right there. Uh, now, you mentioned you you know, you know, got uh, got slotted out of, of going to Japan due to the injury. Uh, are there any plans to uh, to maybe go to Japan in the near future, or is that pretty much on hold now with well, no, there's, uh, there's all kinds of plans in the works right now, and I really can't discuss all of them. Um, the, the knee injury was a, basically just a, you know, it's a little roadblock, and uh, a lot of people are like, oh, no. And, you know, again, it's one of those things where, you know, you, uh, you, you control your own fate, and um, I've gotten over that hump, and I'm fixing to make a, uh, you know, I've, I've already made a, a huge comeback. But, uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of plans in place. There's a lot of plans to uh, do a lot of different things. So, If... Uh if you were to to step into the WWE tomorrow, who's some of the guys on the roster right now that that you'd like to get in the ring with and compete with? Oh, uh, oh gosh, man! All those guys, uh, I got a lot of respect for every one of those guys up there. Um, I tell you what, a guy that uh, uh, my brother and myself both relate to a lot is Randy Orton. Randy Orton being a third generation guy, um, he's probably one of the best guys they have right now. Um, Randy, um, wow. Uh, Hunter, you know, Triple H for sure, one of the best performers there's 
Ben, uh, Sean, Michaels. Um, oh gosh, uh, you know everybody has their own different little thing. Uh, there's so many of them up there, man. Every one of those guys, I would uh, I would love to sit in the ring with. You know, we, Teddy and I are both were fortunate enough to we were trading with Harley, uh, Lance, and uh, Lance Cade and Trevor Murdoch. Uh, especially Trevor. Trevor was with us two or three times a week there at Harley's in uh, Eldon, Missouri, and uh, we learned a lot. You know, talking about a guy that's coming straight off the road from a you know, WWE event and coming there and uh, training us and wearing us out, which is uh, very fortunate to have that. Um, oh gosh, there's a, there's a handful of guys up there. Are there any of them? You know, it's one thing uh, I, I would love to be within the ring with any of those guys because you know I can always learn something and uh, my brother can always learn something. And they've been there longer than we have, so it's not one of them up there I wouldn't love to be in the ring with. Well, Mike, it's been great talking to you. I mean, you certainly got a, a bright future and, and a great attitude about the business, and, and I, I think you're the kind of guy the business needs, and I know you and your brother uh, are going to make it up there soon enough and, and make a big impact in the business just like your father has. Uh, but before we go, is are there any websites or shows or anything you'd like to plug? Man, uh, <clears throat> the PWF at Amarillo, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an indie fed here in Amarillo that uh, – I'm working with and working on, and we're trying to, you know, I'm trying to bring wrestling back to West Texas like it used to be. I'm not sure if you, I'm sure you know the history here. There's so many greats that came out of here, and this is my hometown. And uh, one thing that I'm focused on is no matter where I go or uh, how far I get in this business, I want to bring everything back to Amarillo. Um, my dad came out of here. Terry Funk came out of here. Uh, Dusty Rhodes, Tully Blanchard, Arn Anderson. There's, uh, I, the list is, is ridiculous, uh, the guys that came out of here. And uh, I just want to bring, bring it back here. As far as websites and stuff go, nah, not too many. I just, uh, for the wrestling community as a whole, man, um, I just, I'm looking forward to uh, being uh, or trying to fill the shoes that uh, have been laid before me. And it's, uh, it's fun, exciting, but it's tough. Well, Mike, we, we, we be- wish you the best of luck and continued success and good health. And uh, keep in touch with us and let us know what you got going on, man. I will, man. I will. I uh, thanks for having me on the show today. I enjoyed it. Thank you very much. All right.